Hey there, Nick Jantakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to update your prompt to display the Git branch that you're in. If you happen to be in a Git repo like we see here in my dot .files, I'm on the master branch. But up here, I'm not inside of a Git repo, so we don't see the branch at all. We're gonna do this in such a way where we don't have to download any third-party tools or extensions or plugins. It's basically going to be a couple of lines of shell script that we drop into our bash RC file or a Z shell config or basically whatever shell that you'd like because this is going to work regardless of what shell that you use as long as it's at least compatible with running bash. And before we get into the gory details here, I just wanna very quickly show you my Z shell config file. And this is the function that we're going to be looking at in this video here, basically this git prompt function function. And in my case with Z shell, I set up to my prompt over here and we just call that function and we set the foreground to be yellow. That's how we saw the master branch before. But if you're using bash instead of Z shell, then you can just update your bash RC file. You can set your PS1 to be whatever the output of this git prompt function here is. You can basically just copy it in and use it as is. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and go over that function in a little bit more detail, see how it works, and in case you want to customize it, you'll know how to do so. So for that, let me go back to this uh, tutorials directory here, and we'll take a look here at a demo script that I whipped up here. It's the exact git prompt function that we are looking at before, but I just isolated it here in its own bash script that now we can just run independently on the command line. So if I run the script here, we'll see that we're not getting any output here because this directory itself is not a get repo. So if I do uh, get init and then we'll do get add a and then we will do get commit. Let's just commit whatever, it doesn't really matter, right? But we can see now right away that uh, it detected that I'm in a git repo, so we have the master branch over here. And now if I run the demo script, we will see that we get the output of space parentheses, the branch name, and parentheses. And that's exactly what we see here in the prompt. And that is all coming from this echo statement over here where we have space parentheses, the branch name, and end parentheses. And, and of course, down here, I'm just calling the function. This would be replaced with uh, adding this to your prompt in your shells configuration file. But, you know, let's break down this function a little bit. And honestly, this could have been technically like a one-liner if we didn't care about truncating the branch name, but we'll see how that becomes useful later on. But before we get to there, let's start breaking apart maybe this command over here. So I will just run uh, this command here on its own, and we get back this output from get, right? We can see refs, head, and master. And this is the branch that run here, master. And then what we do here is we just redirect outputs to dev null because as we saw before, like in case you're not in a get repo, we don't want this whole entire script just to, you know, explode and crash and break the world and, you know, make your prompt not work. So in that case, then we just won't get any output at all because uh, yeah, the branch won't have any value here. So in this case, this last if condition here, you know, we only echo out the branch name if the branch variable happens to be defined, that's what the dash n there is over here. So, you know, these things both need to evaluate to true and then we get the branch. Otherwise, if not in a git repo, then this echo will not execute and uh, then it all works. But in this case here, let's expand out and copy a little bit more. Well, actually what we could do is, uh, yeah, I'll just write this out here. So what we wanna do here is cut this on a forward slash. Why? Because in this output here, we have a forward slash here. And what we want is we want to get the third item there. We're basically splitting it on a forward slash. And if we run that, now we get master. And if we did one here, we would get refs. And then, you know, two gives us heads over here. But in our case, yeah, we just care about three here, which is the branch that we want. So this is a very quick and painless way to get the active uh, branch that you are setting uh, to head here, forget. So that gives us the branch that we want. Great. Next up, we can potentially truncate this value because let's just say if I do get checkout B here, and uh, you know, this is gonna be maybe dependent on where you work or you know how you work with get repos, but you know, in a lot of cases, you end up with a fairly long branch name. Like you may decide to prefix all of your branches with uh, some form of maybe ticket ID from whatever ticketing system that you use. You know, maybe it's a feature and then you can do like my cool feature uh, is cool. And then uh, you can check out your branch there. And what this does here, is it will only output 30 characters of the branch name. And after that, it's gonna put a dot, dot, dot. And uh, that's basically what all this code is doing. And we'll break it down, don't worry. But uh, this could be useful because, you know, as mentioned, branches could get kind of long. And if you didn't truncate this and it's even longer, then you end up in a scenario where like your prompt is like all the way over here and like you can type one word before it wraps to a second line. Now I am zoomed in a lot here for the sake of the video, like typically even with this length over here, it's probably like at least half that. So maybe my prompt is like sitting around over here usually. So, you know, 30 characters works out pretty well. It doesn't like overtake my entire prompt. And uh, yeah, so let's break this down a little bit how this is working. So this works with bash and I don't think it's POSIX compliant. Uh, I'd have to double check that one. I'll maybe throw an overlay on if it is yes or no after researching it. But what we're gonna do here is basically grab the first character in the string, which is the branch. 
And then we're gonna go up to the 30th character. So this is basically like the truncated version of that. So if I do echo uh, branch here and echo branch truncated, I'm not gonna bother quoting them. I know I've done videos in the past, but this is all temporary stuff here. So let me just go rerun the script here and we can see that uh, we echo out the branch, the non-truncated version of it, and we get the whole entire branch name. But we can also see the truncated here. You know, this is just 30 characters over here. And if we really wanna uh, test that, we can paste that in there and you can see uh, in the status bar in Vim here, it's at 30, right? So now it's going to be at one and then whatever that happens to be six. And there we go, 30 characters. And now what we do is once we have that, um, I'm also going to get rid of these lines here. Then we're doing an if condition here. And this is also bash specific or, you know, technically not POSIX compliant. It would work with Z shell as well, but well, actually I don't want to say that for sure. It might work with Z shell, but it doesn't matter because, you know, we set our bash environment for the script here or actually it will work with Z shell. Why? Because it's like literally in my Z shell config file and it's working. So there we go. It does work. But what we're going to do here is basically compare two numbers and we're going to say like if the branch count of characters, which we'll see in a second what this evaluates to is longer than the truncated version, then let's just reassign this branch variable here to be the truncated value with dot, dot, dot. And that's how we get this output over here. But uh, yeah, the way this works is if I do echo dollar sign this branch, and then uh, let's also do it for the truncated branch as well. Truncated, nope, it's the other way around branch underscore truncated. There we go. So if I do that, we're going to end up getting two numbers back here. So 39 and 30. So in this case, when I have this long branch name checked out, the actual branch name is 39 characters, which is going to be greater than the truncated value, which is 30 characters. So that means this is going to evaluate to true. And then, yeah, this condition is going to fire. But if I go and check out the master branch instead, let me clear this and then I uh, do a demo there. We can see that the value is six and six. You know, six is not greater than six because six is equal to six. So basically the else condition, if it were to exi exist here, would execute. In other words, this is not going to happen. And instead we're just gonna get the branch as is, basically the non-truncated value because it doesn't need to be truncated. So that's basically how all of that works out there. And then again, we went over this before, it's only gonna echo it out when uh, we're in a Git repo. Yeah, so that is basically it for this setup here. Now, I have seen in other folks a setup where there's a little bit more detail to your get uh, characters and other things in your prompt. Like for example, you can show, you know, if uh, things need to be staged or not, right? Maybe you've put a little asterisk there or a little star if uh, you have some files that aren't staged. And, you know, you can even have some numbers there too. Like for example, maybe you need to pull down four commits from your upstream because yours is out of date. And you can get all this information here, but in my opinion, from the way I use get, that just seems to be a little bit, uh, I'm not gonna say overkill, but like it's not necessary information to see when I'm on my shell. So if I wanna see things like what files aren't staged or you know what's different between A and B or whatever, typically I'm doing all of that inside of my code editor. And having the branch though, just in plain view like this is very, very nice on the shell at least, because for me, I tend to execute almost all of my git commands straight from the terminal here. So when I'm in a project and I'm ready to do some commits there, you know, I'm going to stage my commits, commit them and push them up all from the command line. And it's very nice to see what branch that I'm on. Don't really care that much about the extra details, but uh, going over here, you know, in the official git repo on GitHub, you know, there is this one git prompt shell script and this script is like, what is it? Like 600 lines long, give or take. And this will give you a lot more detail about your git repo in your prompt. But uh, if you wanted to do this, then yeah, you'd have to like basically reference this in your uh, RC file for your shell. And you would get all sorts of different information here, right? We can find the upstream type and all the other stuff here that's commented out. Now, I'm not saying it's horrible if you're someone who wants to do this, but for me, that just, you know, aren't things that I really uh, care too much about in my day to day. Again, just going back, like my editor is going to give me that information. But if you did want to add a little bit more bells and, bells and whistles, there is that script to look for. I'm sure if you Google around for like, you know, get prompts, uh, blah, 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 you'll find all sorts of things that you can just pull in. But if you're like me and just want basically the bare minimum, I don't mind just lugging around this function in my Z shell RC file and then calling it. And uh, that's basically it. So if you have any comments below, let me know. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Also, let me know your preference. Like, do you like to see just the branch? Do you like to see other characters, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, on that note, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.